guest here today is a man who is still remembered as the most popular of post-war British boxers, Henry Cooper, for 11 years a British heavyweight champion. Since retiring, he's become, among other things, a member of a Lloyd's underwriting syndicate. Well, Henry, we won't ask you what that involves, <laughs> but can I just say that as somebody I've always respected, both in and out of the ring, Thank and somebody you. I've always imagined as being very mild-mannered, what on earth made you take up a profession which involved punching people? Well, it's quite easy when you know the people in front of you are going to come back slinging punches at you. So you think, let's get ours in first before they land theirs. But no, it's it's a job of work, basically. If we're talking about professional boxing, that is, it's a, a job of work and you psych yourself up. That's why I used to leave home for about a month before a big fight, just to psych yourself up to, to get mean, to get fit, to get mentally right for the fight. Yeah. Mm. Well, did you start boxing? I mean, in the post-war years when things were very hard, did you start boxing to make money, to get yourself a job, as it were? Well, no. I mean, originally we started, because I started boxing when I was, what, between nine and ten years old. So you start as an amateur club. You do it because in them days, I suppose, when I was uh, around as a kid, you could only do two things. That was kick a tin can or play football or box. And boxing being in the family, dad being a boxer, and my grandfather was a fighter, we just took to boxing. And uh, and that's how it stemmed. But then when you got older, when I went into the army and... Uh, 52 and then I came out in 54 then I thought well I won all the silver pots and the can canteens of cutlery and the coffee percolators I could have indoors I thought let's see if we can um, you know, make it pay and fight yeah. for money what, what did your mum say when you came home from school one day and said mum I'm going to be a boxer well, she didn't mind while we was little it was funny she didn't mind she loved it and she only ever came and watched us box once as a, as a senior boxer but she'd watched us once or twice perhaps as a, a, a junior and she thought that was lovely because you know basically it wasn't hurting each other but then when she see the men getting and we were a bit bigger when the punches were a little bit harder or oh, she didn't want to know no she said well, <laughs> she didn't she never never came out she never ever watched me box professionally yeah, yeah. there's a phrase which which cropped up in boxing mm. um, many years ago perhaps in the 30s and 40s mm -hmm. and that was a hungry fighter mm. when, when men went into mm. boxing what, i mean what did that phrase actually mean well, in them days, it meant what it, what it said exactly, a hungry fighter. See, in them days, you didn't have a welfare, where, welfare state. I'll get it right now. <laughs> Use me proper teeth, yeah. um, No, in them days, as I say, we didn't have a welfare state. You had to, if you didn't work, you starved. Mm -hmm. So the only way they could earn a few bob was fighting. And most boroughs where the part of London I come from, which was um, the Elephant, the Walworth, and the old Kemp Road, all around that area, Bermondsey pr produced a lot of great fighters because mm. it was a rough, tough area. Yeah. yeah, and with the state of unemployment and, and young people being unemployed mm. as it is today, are there as many young lads going to boxing, do you think? Well, boxing's had a little boost um, since, you know, we've got now, what, two and a half million unemployed now. Certainly there's been a boost. Um, quite a few now coloured fighters have coming into the game. The class, perhaps, and the standard is not quite as good as it was a few years ago for some reason, but the boxing has had a little boost because our times produce surf boxers or fighters, whatever you want to call it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I've said before that you were a very mild mannered man and meeting you mm. this afternoon, you certainly are. But when you were in the ring, did you feel some sort of degree of anger? I mean, what, what did you feel? Was it a, mm. a total hatred or did you have an objective view to your opponent? That was just, it was um, a cold calculus. I mean, boxing basically is all about self-control. It's self-control in your way of life, in living, in your training. And, and professional boxing was my business. I mean, if I could have gone in and knocked everyone out in the first round, that would have been the greatest thing I could have done, the greatest, because I didn't want to be in there too long. No, it was a cold clinical thing. I went in there perhaps to, and I, and I thought this way, if I could go in there and knock the guy in the first round, I'd save him a lot of punishment, and myself perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, yes. Well, you've got two sons, one who's, what, 20? Yes, right? he's 20. And yeah. the other one is 13, who's come with you this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Are they going to go into boxing? I don't think so, no, because as I've said previous, you know, um, uh, middle class and better class families, you don't get boxers, that day they don't produce boxers. So the boys have had it a bit too easy, to be honest. You know, I mean, they've, they've both been educated, they've both, one of them's been, and the other one is taking place now in private schools. We all try to give them a little bit more than what we ever had. And, um, no, they've had it too easy. What do they want to fight for? Now, do they have it very easy at home? I mean, are you a tough disciplinarian as a dad? Do you cuff them about the ear? Well, I don't cuff them around the ear. Oh, I don't cuff them around the ear at all. I give them a the backhand right the old backside hand again. <laughs> if they annoy me too much, they cop one, so they know how far to push me. But yeah. uh, no, mum's the easier touch. Albina, you know, she's an easier touch. So if they want it, they usually get round mum first. So then mum usually comes round to me and says, "Well, you know, that." But I try to be hard, but they usually wear me down. You know? <laughs>
<laughs> as, as a sporting personality, you must have been very aware while you're boxing that you were uh, setting examples, that, that your behaviour mm. was, was being seen by younger people mm -hmm. coming up in the profession. How did this affect your life? Yeah, well, it's a thing you're always conscious of because, you know, I mean, um, you know, to be honest, you know that kids are uh, making you an example. So, you know, I didn't want to go into pubs and booze and come out drunk. Though it wasn't the hardship because I wasn't a boozer or anything like that, you know. So um, I didn't have that problem. And it's nice when the public uh, respect you and the kids are up. So you, you, you're aware of that mm. and you try to, um, you know, put the right image in front of them, mm. basically. How do you feel about those who don't set good examples in the sporting world? Well, in a lot of respects, they're very short-sighted because basically it's the public that pay your wages. I mean, as I said, I've been retired, what, 11 years now. I can go anywhere in the country, which I do, doing store visits for different companies I've got tie-ups for. Um, people still want to come up, shake hand, want an autograph. Hey, great, lovely. And that's great because basically, I suppose, you've you've used your head when you was boxing and you've, you've spent a little time just to say hello to them. I mean, I've seen footballers say to a kid, you know, bugger off, you mm. know, when he wanted an autograph. I mean, that's just such a short-sighted policy it's unbelievable because it's the public i say that pay your wages that's yeah. right and after 11 years after retiring you're still a household name that's just like the mestos that's me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> gets rid of unknown germs <laughs> how, how do you account for that well it's just a funny thing i can you know you can never put your finger on it really no to be honest i think um I was always honest with the public. I suppose I was one of the first ones, and I did have one or two bad fights in my career where, I, as I say, stunk the joint out. And I used to apologise next day. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I stunk the joint, but it'd be better next time. Mm -hmm. And I think basically, if you if you're yourself and you're honest with the public, um, they're tied to you. And thank mm -hmm. God they took to me, as I say. Because uh, Henry, we should go on taking yeah. to you for a lot more years. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming. My pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm.